Hi, in this video, we will now take a look at how what happens when our characteristic equation has real but equal roots. So we already talked about what happened in the distinct case, real and complex. But now we have the last case, which is the repeated roots. And the idea now is that we cannot say that there can only be one solution set as we need to have a second solution. So how do we get this second solution? Well, we can use the Abel's theorem to help us. So what does Abel's theorem tell us? Abel's theorem tells us that the second solution and the first solution must satisfy the Wojnskian and the formula must it be this. Okay, so we now know that y1 is known. So we want to know y2 now. So by Abel's theorem, we find that the Wojnskian, which is this determinant, must equal to this. And we already know how to do this, right? Because e to minus integral of pt, is, you know what's pt. So this whole thing is known. So this whole thing is known. And the c need to be non-zero in order for this to form a fundamental solution. So we can just set c1, c to be 1 without any loss of generality. And because of that, we see that y1 times y2 prime minus y2 times y1 prime must be this. And this reduces the question to a first order ODE. Because we know this, we know y1 prime, we just don't know y2. So these are unknowns. We also know what is this. This allows us to create a first order linear differential equation. And from here, we'll know how to solve it. So, for example, we have this. We, we know that e to the power minus 2t will be a solution. Then we just use this equation over here. And this allows us to cancel e minus 2t. And with that, we arrive to this new ODE. So, this we can use the integrating factor formula. And this gives us x2 equals to t e minus 2t plus c e minus 2t but c but e minus 2t well that's one of the solution we need so this part is not we can ignore this part and this will form our basic like the solution and then you just can you can also just check that this really solves the equation and the one scan between the x1 and the x2 now is non-zero So in general, when we have repeated roots, we can always write y the equation as the following. And in general, if you just solve it generally, we can use Abel's theorem to help us fight, figure out that y2 will always be t e r t. So it's like t y1. So the fundamental set of solution is y1 and e r t and y2 which is t e r t which is t y1 now that's the a good example of when the equation has real coefficients but now what happens if your coefficient is non-constant so these are the non-constant coefficient we and we are given that you know already one solution so how do we find the second solution is well we convert it to standard form first and again we use a Abel's theorem to tell us what the one scan must be so in that case then we now can solve this first order ODE to get that y2 equals to 2 over 3 e half and from that our general solution with c1e one minus 1 plus c2e t half. So I see, you can see how we use the method of Abel's theorem to help us solve for this repeated roots scenario. And with that idea, with that technique, now we are able to apply it to other type of equations such as having non-constant coefficients.
So this is the first method of doing it. The next method of doing it is known as the reduction of order. It is something similar as what we want now is to ensure as is to make our our second order formula into second OD, order ODE into a first order ODE. And how are we gonna do that? Okay, so we just want to find a second solution and what we need is we just let y equals to a function in terms of t times y1 okay then when we differentiate at twice once we get this and differentiate twice we get this and we substitute them into equation 27 over here and we collect the terms this allows us to form this equation but we already know why one is a solution so actually this this and this cancels out because they will equals to zero right this will equals to zero so in the end we are only left with this portion over here and this reduction order despite its appearance being a second order OD, we can just let u equals to v prime then this is actually just u prime and this is just u so this becomes a separable equation and we can easily find the answer to it so we should just give an example and you'll better understand this method of reduction of order so how did people think of this is we just gather the inspiration from using Abel's theorem we just see that it is actually y2 equal to t times y1 in this case it's just y2 equals to some function times y1 also you see this t triple minus three over 2 this t half so people just like decided that it could be just a function in terms of t times y1 which is very natural of course like imagine you have equal roots so it's like one root is this some the other root is just some function that has multiplied with this equal root so we just see okay so you give them that y1 is this solution then we want to find the fundamental cell solution we just let y equals to some function times y t minus one then the prime is this the double prime is this substitute into 31 and we get this formula with that formula now we just let w equals to the v prime it will be reduced to this first order ode we solve for w easily which is ct half then v will just equals so we know that v equals to v v prime equals to w so we already know w we just need to integrate to get v so this is the answer and it follows that y equals to v times t minus one is this this part you can ignore because it is a multiple of y1 and we just see that y2 will just equals to t half we just need to check the one strand to be non-zero and we see that we arrive at the same formula as when we use abel's theorem so that's it for the procedure very simple very straightforward you can practice more using the textbook and i'll catch you again in the next video see you